In an earlier video of a few days ago, I was talking about the A stable multivibrator. And I told that when you made this circuit out of my book, you could get to all kinds of frequencies. And especially, uh, it was a square wave. Airwave. Uh, this is, by the way, the Dutch text. So uh, when you are uh, living or don't in English uh, language uh, parts of the world, anyway, um, the schematic is always, of course, universal, and this is that schematic. And I told that it was very easy to make, etc. etc. For higher voltages, use this and that. But uh, that was, of course, also for me a kind of advantage to work that further out. And I've done that here. And there was an earlier video. Uh, this seems haywiring, uh, not logical, etc., etc., but it is completely logical. And because we are working in the frequency band from approximately 30 hertz up to, say, 30 kilohertz, uh, the wiring is not very critical. Though there are always, uh, say, things to tell about uh, the wiring etc etc anyway um, this is the circuit as it is now it is a square wave oscillator and the good thing of it is um, that it can give out approximately 40 volts AC and with AC I mean the uh, square wave. So here's the transformer, uh, here the smoothing capacitor, etc. etc. Here's the front plate, and like I always make my circuits, and when you follow my channel, you will surely know that. Uh, the wood that I use here is triplex wood, and I glue tin plate from C. Uh, beer cans or soda cans must of course be steel to that uh, triplex. Uh, not aluminium uh, does not make any sense because you cannot solder not solder to aluminium. And this is steel. It shields here and on the back side of the whole thing. Uh, I've done the same thing. It's multiplex wood, and I've glued again very thin steel plate to the whole circuit, and that's important because when we are talking uh, about, say, um, a proper waveform, there must always be a good earth connection, and that's very, very important. The earth connection and in, on my YouTube channel you can find many, many videos about how to make a good earth connection. Anyway, uh, that was a kind of side pass. What about the A-stable multivibrator? Well, this is my, in my Dutch book, the circuit. You can surely reproduce it, it will work nice and here you see that you can change the uh, the waveform the duty cycle also and when we go back to the 1950s this is a beautiful book television uh, it's from the Philips factories the Philips scientific research factories out of the 1950s and here you see, say, the basic circuit of a 
tube multivibrator. In fact, this circuit and that circuit does not differ much in terms of, say, uh, electronic properties. These capacitors, for instance, are responsible for the frequency. And they have used two triode tubes. Beautiful book. Uh, pen over somewhat, because in those days, in the 1950s, uh, there were only tubes, no transistors were there. And here you see all kinds of adaptations to that multivibrator circuit with which you can change the duty cycle and the frequency. And in my circuit that I'm doing, that I'm showing now, you can also see in a kind of way the same properties and especially here. Here there is a voltage divider and um, say the, the voltage to the grid here and to the other grid here, this grid and that grid, is changed. That means that the electron flow uh, differs. And that also has a direct effect on the frequency. This is Dutch, by the way. Sorry that it is all Dutch, but anyway, when you are understanding something about how uh, such a circuit works, this can be enough. For instance, here, a 100K resistor uh, with a protective resistor of 1K, 1 kilo ohm, and then you can use here transistors, etc., etc. Uh, I only have, say, se uh, seven minutes <coughs> to show what I am working on. So, now my circuit, it is in fact more or less the same compared to the circuit of the 1950s, but now it is made with transistors. And I've used here by purpose a Darlington to uh, say to get a uh, bigger current amplification that means that in general you can use smaller values of capacitors to get to high frequencies. Uh, there is one say problem in this circuit sometimes when you switch to another frequency band here uh, the oscillator stops, and that's a kind of problem. I searched it out. I tried to make other circuits, but say the most primitive uh, solution proved to be this reset button here. And with that reset button, uh, we say uh, discharge the base of the first transistor and. Uh, I found that after many experiments that when this when on the base of that first transistor there is a charge hanging the oscillator doesn't want to start again. Anyway, let's see. What this all can bring. Here is that circuit again. And let's see what it all can bring. At first, put down the camera for a while, and here we see the waveforms generated by this circuit. Square waves, of course. Now on the lowest frequency, and say when you uh, make the capacitors for that lowest frequency band somewhat bigger, you get lower frequencies. Now the uh, highest value capacitor is 0 0.47 uh, microfarad and then we are on 113 Hertz but we go we can go to lower frequencies have to adapt the scope somewhat. 
Here there's also a small flaw. I hope to repair it. Uh, but now we are on 100 and 137. Anyway. Hundred thirteen, so I have to reverse the connections of my potentiometer. But anyway, this is what I wanted to tell, and it's a first circuit. It's part one. So very good waveform. Uh, now we go to a higher frequency band, and here we are on a higher frequency band, and well. Uh, 507 Hertz change that potentiometer again 615 Hertz now we go to another higher frequency band 3.4 kilohertz and change it again S strange saying that it that it looks in a certain way reversed but no problems with that it's electronics and now we are on the highest frequency band and here it stops well this is a very important moment here is no oscillation you can surely see it no oscillation and in that case that that's the highest frequency band here and now I push the reset button here and then it starts to oscillate again. That's what I'm going to do. Push that reset button here. Let's see what happens. It doesn't want, yes, it starts. It doesn't want to start. Well, Well, it doesn't want to start. It's a problem. Serious problem. Here's our reset button. Yes, it starts. So, I think it has something to do with, say, the... Uh, say, um, discharging the base here completely. Now it certainly wants to start and, well, that's okay. And we are now on a very high uh, frequency, 24.7 uh, kilohertz, 50 kilohertz. You can of course see, say, uh, that it is no longer a square wave. That's completely logical has everything to do with the properties of the transistors, the properties of the circuit. I can't go too deep into it, but anyway. So, I think it's a useful circuit um, for ele electronic experiments, etc, etc. And by the way, it is the first set up. So, now we are on 50 kHz, it's very high. I switch now the this switch here back to another frequency band and here again I switch it back to the highest frequency band and it stops again and now I have pushed the button etc etc it works again etc so this is by the way one frequency band lower uh, I only have a few few seconds to show more about this whole circuit. So, thanks for watching. It works very properly. And when you are somewhat acquainted with electronics, you can hear now I'm switching between two frequency bands. Uh, when you are somewhat acquainted but, uh, with electronics, the question could be, why does this... Uh, transistor don't have a forward bias here and the good thing is important thing to tell is that it does not need here a forward bias to work properly 
and when you give it a forward bias the circuit uh, sometimes uh, doesn't work properly anyway thanks for watching put my camera down uh, and see how long this my camera will uh, work till it automatically switches off anyway here are the other frequencies 507 kilohertz change it somewhat 627 and here and of course I have to change somewhat the time base <laughs> and I hope to say repair this tiny part here on that lower frequency band so you you see now that when I switch the frequency up sometimes uh, there's no problem it works anyway thanks for watching